write this book. It's entitled The Kingdom of God, A Present Day Reality. And uh, we have some of these in the bookstore. But I got one of David's books from him tonight. And, and I said, David, I'm going to take one of your books and give it away. He says, sure, that's fine. So, so Sister Denise Brown, come and get this. I said, who to give it to, Lord? He said, give it to Denise Brown. Enjoy. Amen. Enjoy. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I, I, I want to uh, present to some, introduce to some, my friend in the Lord, and I thank God for David and his wife, Carlise. They've been really been a blessing. We go way back. I tell you, I, I, I think of, uh, remember, remember behind McDonald's? They used to be a part of the house behind McDonald's. And I remember when the fire of God would hit David and he would dance against the wall. I would see, I mean, I, he could, that little man could dance. I'm telling you. I remember the power of God would hit him and he'd just get into dancing just like a whirlwind. But I thank God for him because I think, I, I saw in him a man that's free in God. Amen. And he's himself, he's humble, and I just love him as a brother. And it seemed like the, that, that was around 1997, 97, 98. And then uh, there was a separation, but you see how God does things? He bring us right back together, amen, for this end time work. So uh, come on, send us, stand to your feet, and let's welcome Apostle David Prosser of North Palms Ministry in North Charleston, South Carolina. They'll bring the word of the Lord to us. Yes, come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Give me a second. I got to look nice and sharp for all you guys. Make sure everything's buttoned and everything's zipped. And... Amen. Great crowd. You're great people. Look at, your, look at your neighbor and say, you look marvelous, darling. Yes. You're beautiful people. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you enjoyed the presence of the Lord thus far? It's going to get better and stronger. As the evening progresses, I promise you. Hallelujah. Can I say something? I am so glad to be here with you, not just to be with you, but it's, thank God, it's so beautiful to be among, can I say it this way, the black race without feeling the uh, of You look at the new, if you look at the news, it'll mess you up. Hear that? There's so much. Of the spirit of Antichrist. That has released the spirit of hate. That if you look at the, if you look at the TV and the news and everything else social media you can literally feel that demon but in opposition of that contrast of that when you come and step into the house of the Lord color means nothing hallelujah amen hallelujah and I spoke this to think the first time I spoke here and uh just a minute. I'm going to introduce you. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Oh. It's beautiful to be in the house of the Lord. And I, as I spoke last time, I'm not a black preacher. And you can look at my face and understand that. But I'm not a white preacher either. I'm the oracle of God for you tonight. Can you hear that? If you can hear that, then you're going to hear the word of the Lord. 
Amen. I want to, just before we go into the Word, amen, I want to just say how honored I am to be here, but also how honored I am to be the husband of this beautiful lady here. Stand up, Carlos. My pretty wife, Carlos. Chris. I'm going to say it real quick. We went to my grandson's baby shower. And my grandson's best friend is Chris, the man whose mother was shot at the AME church. But this week, God blessed him and rewarded him with a free wedding that was on TV. Everything was provided, the honeymoon and everything. And my uh, grandson got to be in that wedding. And I just rejoiced because he's put those two together as best friends. And that's the way we feel about y'all. We love you, too. <laughs> Amen. We're all so glad to, to have my adopted son. And it's not legal, but he is my adopted son. All the way from New York. Amen. He now lives here. He is a he is a bona fide South Carolinian, for sure. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord here. You feel it? You hadn't even gotten into the Word yet. Lift up holy hands for just a moment, Father Lord. We just give you this service. We give you the Word, Father. I ask that you open the ears of the hearing ear that will penetrate deep into our spirits tonight. Lord, this thing that I'm about to teach cannot be taught. It has to be caught by the Holy Ghost. So, Lord, as I see hands lifted up, let them catch the revelation of what you have to say to them. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. One, one last thing. I'm glad that uh, Apostle Ruth has mentioned the book. And uh, I have to say that even though I penned the book, I did not write it. The Holy Ghost wrote it. And I believe God's going to use this book. And it's going to send it all around the world. Because this message that God has spoke in this book, the church needs to hear it and receive. It's about the kingdom of God in a present day reality. It's about identifying who you are and in the fact that God has chosen you from before the foundations of this earth to be on this earth right here, right now, to bring the kingdom age to this earth, to bring that to the place where Jesus can come back. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It's about unlocking and unfolding and unlocking your destiny that God has called you in long before you were born. Long before the foundations of this earth were laid, you were there with God. And now He's bringing you into the manifestation of that which he designed way back then. Hallelujah. Get the book, not just because I wrote it, but get the book because you need to hear the revelation of what's in it. Amen. I'm so glad that, that uh, I like that song. And I, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there, I promise. I, I like that last song that Apostle Rufus, it wasn't a song, it was that, war dance and I reached, whispered over to Josh I said this thing is tribal and he mentioned something about denominations and you do know we get in trouble when we try to denom God's nation And God brought that into my spirit, and all of a sudden I heard the word nation. 
God has designed you and I not just to be a church, but to be a nation. And that nation is called the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In which who you are. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not being puffed up, but I am the kingdom of God tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are hungry for God? Let me see your hand. I'm so glad that these services are what they are. Fire and glory. The fire and glory is going to fall. And tonight, even though I'd like to do it, I'm not going to get into heavy revelations much. Everybody say, keep it simple tonight. But yet I believe that I've got enough God in me, enough anointing in me, that I can keep it interesting. Hallelujah. The first time I preached this message, the message is titled, Are We Hungry Yet? The first time I preached this message, I was up in North Carolina, and I was in a hotel room waiting. You know, I, 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 got, I always get dressed before cars. It's just a nature of men and women, you know. And I was sitting there in the chair, just waiting, you know, for the time to, to get in the car and go to the church. Meditating on what God had given me for that people. And I just began to cry out to God, God, I'm so hungry for you. And suddenly I just literally felt the inside of me open and I felt the gushing of my hunger gush out to God. It was like he opened me up and the well just started spewing and flowing out of me. And it was and it was it wasn't anointing, it wasn't gifting, it was hunger. Tonight I believe that God's gonna open you up. And hunger is gonna flow out of you tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Rufus, I, I, I want to be honorable to the house, but would it be offensive if, if I could get this podium? Got you got another one? No, good. That, 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 that would do good. Uh, I just like to be up close and personal. Can I do that tonight? Amen. I just like to get right up to you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle. Now let me just get my... And by the way, Apostle... The book you gave away, that was mine to give, so I'm going to replace it. With what you gave away, I was going to give away, so no, no, I'm replacing that. Yes. Amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 21. And by the way, do, do me a favor. I've got the Word of God in print here. Can you trust that it is the Word of God? Oh, yeah. Just put your Bibles away and just listen. Take your shoes off and listen. Just relax. Can we do it? We're at home tonight. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Note the wording. It says, blessed are you that's not just hungry, but hungry when? now not hungry yesterday not necessarily hungry tomorrow in which you will be but blessed are they that are hungry now let me ask you something how many of you ate breakfast this morning well, how many of you know that, that if that's the only meal you ate you're starving by now why because that which you ate this morning did not sustain you for this long a period of time. Your hunger is designed to be renewable. Renewable. Blessed are you that hunger now. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm hungry tonight. Hear this. You're not just, I see your hearts, I see your spirits. God is just opening you up and I see into you. 
you're not just hungry for for God to do something. You're hungry for God to do the phenomenal, for God to do something not just in your midst, but something through you. And you're hungry right now. This is a place where we must be at all times. Constantly in a place of hunger for Him. This must be a definite, defining purpose. Your hunger must be a definite, defining purpose. And not just to be consumed on yourself. Can you hear this? If I'm hungry and God fills me just for me and my little need, then I'm in a whole world of trouble. Because there's a dying world outside of these walls. And you know that. Somebody has to overcome the hate. Somebody has to overcome the prejudice. Somebody has to overcome the, 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 the anti-God. And God's looking for somebody to stand up and say, God, I'm hungry, not just for myself, but I'm hungry for a groaning creation. Hallelujah. Jesus. Everybody say, keep it simple. Nehemiah, just sit back and listen. I'm going to read scripture here. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 13 through 15. Moreover, you led them by, the, by day with a cloudy pillar and by night with a pillar of fire. You gave them light on the road which they should travel. You came down also to Mount Sinai and spoke with them from the heaven. You gave them just ordinances and true laws good statutes and commandments. You made known to them your holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws. Here's the key to this scripture. By the hand of Moses, your servant, you gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and you gave them rock out of the rock for their thirst. Notice this. By the hand of Moses, you gave them bread for their hunger you gave them water out of the rock for the thirst. And then you told them to go possess the land. Your hunger is not just for you to sit there and be fed and be a fat baby. Your hunger is so God can impart to you not only what he wants for you, but impart to you his nature, his anointing, so you can go out and possess the land. Hallelujah. Notice this. Hear this. Everybody lift, lift up your hand and say, I am hungry tonight. Why are you hungry? Because God did it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's God's fault. How do I know that? Because it takes God in you to hunger after God. Can you hear that? You can't get there by yourself. It takes God and you to hunger after God. How do I know that? Because the Bible is very clear on it. The Word of God says that you can't even come to the foot of the cross unless the Father draw you. Can you hear that? You can't hunger after God on your own. Somebody has to, somebody has to put that hunger in you. If you were, if God didn't put that hunger in you, you would just be going after everything. And I'm not just talking about the world. I'm talking about you would go after, you would, you would just, see, what sets this house apart from most houses in America is that you're not just going after the sensation. You're going after God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's God's fault. He did it. Amen. Now, let's go to another scripture. John 6, chapter 6, verse 32 through 35. 
And Jesus said unto them, Most assuredly, I said unto you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from the heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just read, we just read something. We just read over Nehemiah that by the hand of Moses. What's going on here? The scripture does not contradict itself, but yet that by the hand of Moses, and then yet Jesus himself said, Moses did not give you this bread. What's going on here? This was not natural bread. This was bread from heaven, and it was spiritual. Can you hear this? You cannot, you cannot reach for the spiritual from the natural. This thing has to be spirit to spirit. Your spirit, hey, hallelujah. Can you hear this? You, you see, you look, at, you look at this man, you look at this older, handsome man up here, and you think this is David Prosser. No, 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 no. No, no, no. What I am, I, you are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. The real deal here, you can't see. Not in the natural. The real deal here is my spirit and your spirit. That's why when we come together, immediately there was a connect in the spirit realm because my spirit and your spirit connected with the heavenly tonight. And our hunger meshed together. And our hunger ascended up into a, 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 a heavenly father. And God came down. If you try to eat, if you try to, to assimilate natural bread, you'll be like the children of Israel, just constantly wandering. But Jesus declared something. He said, I am the bread of life. Can you hear this? The I am spoke. He, said, he didn't say, I am the bread of life. He said, I am. I am. The bread of life. You're feeding on that bread of life right now. Can you hear that? Can you understand that? You right now you're 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 feeding on that, and not only are you feeding you're you're just you're like you're like a, a, a thirsty man in a desert, where you found a pool of water, and you you you, just, you don't have a cup, you don't even care. You got your face down there. Just <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Men in ministry is, are tired of the same old stuff. Aren't you? Aren't you glad God is moving in a new day and a new hour? And there's fresh bread. Everybody say fresh bread. This ain't your daddy's church. Can you hear that? God's moved on. Can you understand that? Thank God for my father, my natural father. Thank God for W.R. Prosser. But my father's been dead for 20 years now. And he's in the portals of glory in the grandstand of heaven, cheering you and I on and saying, son, don't do it the way I used to because God's moved on from that. Get a hold with the freshness of God in the mind of God and know where God is. Don't be satisfied by just standing in the tracks where God used to be. But move on, move on with God. Move on with God. Hunger after God. Hunger after God. Hunger after God. I hear and I see the hunger in this house. Psalms 38, verse 8, 34, verse 8. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hear this. You get a taste of that bread coming off the hot coals of heaven. And that old stale bread will never satisfy you again. You get a taste of the, of, of the anointing. You get a taste of the real anointing. You get a taste of the, the real bread, the real fresh bread, fresh bread on the coals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. What coals am I talking about? Isaiah said, in the day of Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up and he was trained to fill the temple. And he said he saw the seraphims, and he one took a tongue and took a hot coal off the altar and touched it to my lips. Hallelujah. How many of you want the bread? Come on, this is fire and glory. Hey, da 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 There has to be an ever-flowing well inside of you. Everybody say, I want that well. Remember the old song that we used to sing? Spring up, O well, within my soul. Spring up, O well, and make me whole. Spring up, O well, and give to me that life. Abundantly. Some of you remember that song. That well came out of the rock. The Bible describes and tells exactly who that rock was. That Bible says that rock was Jesus. Yeah. Psalms 107, verse 35 and 36. He says, He'll turn the wilderness into pools of water. How many have you have been in the wilderness as of late? Come on. I have. And sometimes when you're in the wilderness, you can be bewildered. And shake your head and say, why, God, what is going on? Sometimes when you're in the wilderness, you, and you're thirsty and dry. God puts you there purposely sometimes. So you will hunger and thirst after Him. Let me give you an example. One time I remember I, I was, God deliberately put me in a place and set me in a house that was drier than last week's bread. And one day after work, traveling home, all of a sudden, it burst in me. And I literally wailed before a holy God. I wailed so loud and so hard, I scared myself. Sometimes God will put you into wilderness so you can be bewildered. So you'll begin to chase after him no matter what. Everybody say no matter what. No matter the cost. Everybody say no matter the cost. No matter the cost. I've got to have him. It doesn't matter. Hear this. And the cost is becoming heavier and heavier. But God's put an insatiable appetite in you. You can't shake this thing. There he makes the hungry dwell. He makes the hungry dwell. That they may establish a city for a dwelling place. Hear this. He makes the hungry dwell so they can establish a city for a dwelling. What's the dwelling place for? It's for other hungry people who are coming after you. And God's put you in the forefront and put that hunger in you. And yet put you in the wilderness so you can be bewildered. Because his desire is not just for you, him to come and have a visitation. His desire is for you to, him to have a habitation among you. Hallelujah. Years ago, a few years back when we were pastoring a small church in Mount Pleasant. 
the glory hit our small church and without fail the glory of the Lord the manifest presence of God would hit that small church and one day I was literally on my own during worship I was literally prostrate before God crying after him and I said God I said I'm so hungry for you and I said God don't let don't ever let please don't ever let this manifest presence lift and suddenly the Lord gave me a vision and I saw a suitcase and I heard in my spiritual ears click click and I saw that suitcase come open and as it came open, I saw clothes just flying out of that suitcase. And the Holy Ghost said, Son, he said, as long as you hunger after me, I will be with you with my manifest presence. Hear this. When God puts that insatiable appetite in you to be hungry for him, he feels that and he will never let it go. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hungering after God. Hungering after God. Okay. Being hungry for God is not something that has to be primed, but it's something rather something that is released out of you. Remember the days when we had to prime that thing like the old Egyptian foot pumps? Had to get that thing primed up. Get the emotions going. But now God's moved beyond that. And now you come to the house of God hungry for Him. And the moment you step into the house of God and join your hunger with someone else's hunger, all of a sudden God opens you up and here is a well of hunger that's just filling the house. Hallelujah. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, I'm hungry tonight. Hear this. You have to put a demand on your hunger. Can you hear that? You have to put a demand on your hunger. Look up here at these lights. I know I stepped in this house right at the time. Of the, the, I think you, did you open the door? It was so, the door was already open. Whoever was in this church first, they came in and flipped the lights on. Hear this. I'm not an electrician, but I know enough about electricity to understand that it's until that the switch is flipped and the demand is put on that electricity until that's done you'll sit in darkness but the moment you put a demand on that electricity flip that switch and that demand is that it the, the light is there can you hear this you know how fast light travels a hundred and eighty six thousand miles per second Ooh, that's fast but do you also understand that darkness flees at that same speed? And some of you are afraid of the dark. God's saying, if you just get hungry for me enough and put a demand on me, I'll come in like the speed of light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are we, are we hearing this? We're doing good tonight? All right. Okay. Most of our, how many of you have problems? We all do. Most of our problems would be resolved if we quit begging God for something and just begin to release the hunger out of ourselves and begin to seek Him. Because most of the time, out of our knees, we don't seek His face, we seek His hands. Can you hear that? I'm not belittling your need. I have needs. You understand that? 
And sometimes the need overwhelms me like it does you. And sometimes the Holy Ghost has to come in and calm me. But I have learned that if I just hunger after God, Put your petition before God. Yes, by all means. Make your petition known before God. But also, relax in God and say, God, I just want to sit at your feet for a while. Forget about my needs tonight. I want to sit at your feet. I want to learn of you. I want to hunger after you. Hallelujah. Can I hear, can I just tell you this? That tonight... While you have hungered after God, God's already gone into your future and working, already working your problems out. And all you've done is just seek Him and hunger after Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up holy hands for a moment. Psalms 46, verse 4 and 5. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in her midst, and she will not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Look at your neighbor and say, Hello, city of God. There's a stream here tonight. Come on. There's a stream whose rivers, and your stream is me merging with my stream, and your sin, and your stream is merging with her, his stream, and all of a sudden the streams begin to merge again, and a raging river, a raging river is created in the house out of your hunger, out of your hunger, out of your hunger. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One more time. How many of you hungry? One last scripture here before I turn the corner. Psalms 24, verse 2 and 3 and 4. Who may ascend to the holy hill of God? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted his soul up to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. You really want God? Are you really hungry? If you are, you'll cry, God, check me. Search me. See there be no evil thing in me. Wash me with hyssop and I'll be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. I don't have to ask this question that I usually ask when I bring this message. I know you're hungry. But so far, thus far in this message, I've talked about our hunger for God. You ready to turn a corner? Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He says, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and what? If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even though I, even as I have overcome and sat down with the Father in his throne. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not talking about the sinner. He's talking to the church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Look at your neighbor and say, you're what's for dinner tonight. You see, we, we, we've, been, we've been talking about us being hungry. Now, we've turned the corner. Now, God's going to begin to feast on you and I. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 26 through 29. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he promised, saying, Yet once more I shall not only shake the earth only, but also heaven. And yet this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of those things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Everybody say, out of my hunger, there's going to be a shaking. Look at your neighbor and say, God, use a shake and bake. 
some of you younger ones may not know about that. We older ones understand that. Shake and bake. Take a piece of, piece of chicken and you get the stuff in the box and put it in a bag and throw that chicken in the bag and shake that thing up and put it in the oven and bake them. Everybody say glory and fire. And, and, and I know, listen, I know I'm older. I understand that. But years ago, there was a singer called Jerry Lee Lewis, and, 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 and you know, in the beginnings of rock and roll, and, and he, he recorded a song and said, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. And I know he wasn't talking about what I'm talking about. But look at your neighbor and say, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. God's going to shake everything that doesn't belong to Him. He's going to shake, rattle, and roll you until everything that's not of Him is shaken out. And then, he's, then He declares He is a consuming fire. And what He can't shake out, He's going to burn out. God, you just shake and bake tonight. How? Why? 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 Because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And God said, because you put your hunger on display, I have put you at your word. And now it's time for my fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's a consuming fire. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just show you. Let me just reveal something that, that I was in a very, very important meeting last Thursday. Cross and I last Thursday. And it was one of those round the table talks things and we meet about every other Thursday and and I'm always about the second to the last and a lot of times everybody else is talking and by the time it comes to me I don't have a whole lot of time, but that's okay. But do you remember Monday was it Monday or Tuesday? You remember that boom? And we found out the day later it was a sonic boom. Everybody saying, I'm going to push the envelope tonight. Do you know where that term came from? Chuck Yeager. Everybody say Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager in the 60s was a test pilot. He tested out those jet planes. And Chuck Yeager would get up to the speed, I think it's 700 and something miles per hour where that jet breaks that sound barrier. He would get up to that sound barrier and that jet would just shake. And he would back off of that throttle because he didn't know what was going on, what was on the other side, what it would do to that jet. And he would go up the next day and get right up to that point and that thing would start shaking. And he would back off time after time. But one day, Chuck Yeager said, I don't know what's on the other side. And I don't know what it's going to do to this jet or me. But I'm going through. And he got to that point, And all of a sudden, he thrust that lever forward. And it made a boom. Broke the sound barrier. Actually, there's two. You hear, you hear one boom, but actually there's two. When the jet goes through the nose and it breaks it, and then it's one boom, and then when the, when the tail end of that jet comes through, it's another one. Hear this. I remember in the 1960s when I was a child, a kid, that was when they were first, you know, the, the, you, you, you've, you've heard that a lot. But you don't hear that. You know, we, we felt something. I felt I hadn't felt that, that in years or witnessed that in years. But suddenly, this week, now Carlos and I, thank God we got his blessings with a nice home. And, and the, it, it, even though it was built back in the 80s, it's a very sound built home. Very, I mean, very good structured built home. And we were upstairs on the sun deck. And that sonic boom hit, and it literally shook our house.
And the next day, or, or, or I think it was Thursday, Thursday I was riding in the car, and all of a sudden God, the Holy Ghost brought that back to me. And he said this. He said, I'm going to shake the earth and heavens. Hear this. When that, sun, when that jet, jet came over Charleston, it wasn't just at my house. The whole low country felt that thing. Everybody in the low country felt that. Heard it and felt it. It was all over the news. Listen to me. When out of your hunger, you will break the sound barrier and you'll penetrate through. Everybody say, I'm going to push the envelope tonight. I'm pushing the envelope. And when you do, hear this, God is going to use you to not only shake the heavens, but shake the earth as well. And you wonder what in the world is going on with our world. And God is saying, I want to use you to break the sound barrier. To, to penetrate through into the heavenly realm. And bring what's in the heavenly realm down to the earthly realm. And restore this earth righteous before God again. Hallelujah. And it all comes out of your hunger tonight. Hallelujah. Hear this. I'm just about finished. John 4, verse 4 through 7. Remember the woman at the well? Let me read this. The scripture says, He must needs go through Samaria. You understand that there was something in, in, the, in the, the destiny of God that God he himself put in himself from before the foundations of the earth. And when he got to that time of point of time, he looked at his disciple and he said, I must needs go to Samaria. Why? Because he had an appointment with a lady. He had an appointment. Listen to me. Something was very important that Jesus would say that. So he gets to Samaria, and he's tired from his journey, and he sits down on Jacob's well. And the disciples understand, well, he's hungry. And what they do, I usually demonstrate this, but I didn't have time to do it. Just have to imagine. The disciples really didn't understand. So they said, okay, God, okay, Jesus, you're hungry. We're going to go to the McDonald's and get you a happy meal. But while they were going to go on to get Jesus this happy meal, Jesus encounters this lady or this woman. And he begins to read her mail. And he said this. He said, you've had five husbands. And the one you're living with is not your husband. Five plus one makes six. Six is the number of man. But she meets the seventh man. And that seventh man, which is completion. To can, come on with me now. Perfection and completion. She meets the seventh man. And, he's, and all of a sudden, he puts a demand on her. And he says, draw from the well and give me something to drink. Hear this now. Now here, here, now listen now. You got, you got to understand this. Here, Jesus is a man, and by and you know he's got to be somewhat muscular. He worked as a carpenter. He wasn't a wimp. Can you say that? You understand that? He knew how to put that bucket down in that well and draw from the well, but instead he puts a demand on her. Jesus can you hear this you you are you catching this you're catching this and all of a sudden all of a sudden the Bible says that 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 when 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 the disciples get back with the happy meal Jesus looked at those disciples and says boys I have meat that you know not of what he was doing he was feeding on her hunger
feeding on her hunger. And you know what happened? The Bible says that she got so filled and so soaked with the glory that she went sloshing her way back to her village and caused revival. Oh, Jesus, can you understand? Oh, my God. Come on, God wants you to get so hungry that you put a demand on Him. And therefore, He puts a demand on you. Therefore, He rains on you. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Jesus. Listen, if Apostle will allow me, I, would love, I want to come back. Because there, I, this is just a, this is foundation. Everybody say, make it simple. That's what God did tonight. God just explained your hunger to you. But hear this: there's principles that you have to walk in. How many of you want His manifest presence of God? Not just one time. Listen, the glory of God failed the last time we were here. Glory's going to fall tonight. But I'm not talking about one time. I'm talking about this house being constantly in His glory. And when people walk through their, those doors, the glory is so strong that conviction comes in. Hear this. Can I, can, I, can I give you a testimony? In our little church in Mount Pleasant, the glory would be so strong on Sunday mornings that the, that the visitors is what we, that would come. We, we wouldn't say anything, nothing be preached, nothing. We would just be in worship. And they would literally fall out of their chairs onto the floor, repenting before a holy God. The glory is going to come in this house so strong that people are going to come through these doors and fall on their face before God repenting. What are they going to repent of? They're going to repent of their hate. They're going to repent of their prejudice. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Hallelujah. I know you don't understand this, but lift, stand up with me. Stand up. Crank that up, brother. Crank that up. In fact, start, start, start it all over. And, and just pause it for a minute. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just pause it for just a second. Now, if we were in, in, in our house over at North Palm. Oh, by the way, by the way, just down the road is another church called North Palm. And they're doing the same thing tonight as what you're doing. And what's happening, the fire's falling over here and the fire's falling over there. <laughs> Come on with me now. And all of a sudden, those fires are going to merge. And this city is going to be ablaze for God. I'm not just talking hype to you. I'm prophesying to you tonight. Hallelujah. But what we're about to play, I'm about to play just a little bit of, a, of, of, of the start of a song. And, and you, you, you're there, Josh. Good. Because what I want us to do, can you move this, Pastor? Just roll it out the way. Thank you so much. If you're hungry, if you're truly hungry after God,